Well, a big welcome to all of you and thank you for joining us today as we move through a question and answer for our global leadership programs here at Royal Roads. Before we get started, it's so important to us to do acknowledgement of the lands. So here at Royal Roads University, we are located on the traditional lands of the Kusepsum and Lekwungen ancestors and families. It's with great gratitude that we live, learn and work on this space where past, present and future Indigenous and non-Indigenous students and faculty come together. So a big, big welcome to all of you for being here. My name is Selena Kunar and I'm an education advisor here on campus. Uh, well, my background looks like I'm here on campus, but given uh, the state of the world, many of us are still tuning in virtually, myself as well. So if we navigate, uh, if we come up on any tech issues, feel free to pop them into the chat box and I'm more than happy to help you navigate anything that we're coming up against today. We have some wonderful folks in the room who are gonna help answer some questions about our exciting graduate programs on global leadership here at Royal Roads, starting with Dr. Wanda Krauss, our program head. Hi, Wanda, thanks for being here. Hi, Selena, thank you for starting us off and introducing the program. I'm Dr. Wanda Krauss, and absolutely thrilled to be able to connect today for about half an hour, uh, where we'll be answering any questions you have around the program. So what the program's content is, what you'll walk away with when you finish the program, what you need at this time as you fill in your applications if you do choose to apply. Uh, and a little bit about myself, I have done most of my work and research abroad, so outside of Canada, and my focus has been mostly the Middle East, but I've also been in Asia and Europe and a little bit in um, doing research in Latin America. And my focus has been some key areas which include civil society development. So understanding the impact of leaders and organizations on civil society to understand their impact on the state level. And also with that, my focus has been gender issues uh, with looking at the, part the participation of women. Um, and that's largely because the work that I do revolves around looking at those who have been marginalized in the literature to demonstrate the wonderful work that they do and also the barriers that they face. So, why global leadership? Why would you want to take a program that's focused not just on leadership capacities, but global leadership capacities? So global leadership is about the capacity. So the capacity to create change in the world in which you are surrounded by locally and also globally to lead and support. There's actually three or four different levels here. First yourself, others within your locality. So whether that's your organization or your community, and then thinking about, as I mentioned with the work I do, those complex systems. So whether that is at the macro level of governance or more broadly uh, with international organizations. So thinking about the impact you might have on various systems, whether that's political, economic, uh, within the techno technological realm, which is becoming more important to focus on, and climate action issues. So those complexities in ways that enhance obviously the well-being of everyone, so communities and the planet both today and thinking also into the future. Who is this for? We get this question all the time. And so you'll see a very long list. And if you do not locate yourself somewhere in this long list, uh, know that you are joining people from diverse cultures and backgrounds, leaders in different sectors, uh, and, and leaders in different parts of the world. And when we say leaders already, obviously you're coming into the program with some experience. And whether you are in a particular role as a leader or not, uh, we see your ability to transform your organization or your community 
as not tied to a specific role. And so you'll see from the list here, if you are within an international organization, this program aligns with the capacities that you need to further um, your commitments and goals. We have students in indigenous organizations and governments, human rights organizations, uh, social enterprise businesses is also an area that's growing. And we don't have health related organizations listed here, but that's also a sector that's been growing within the program. And so we've got three different streams and I'll break these down for you, beginning with the one at the bottom, which is our masters. And there are two streams here. The 13 intensive masters program, which is, it is really intensive. So if you do choose to take the 13 month option, we would expect that you're actually not working. Um, there's very little room to do anything really but study during this time and complete your studies within that period of time. And the 24 months. So the two year program does allow you to work alongside taking the two year program. And many of our, most of our students actually work full time when they take the two year program. In addition to these two streams or options, you also have the ability to learn in a blended format. And what that means is you're mostly online and you can learn from anywhere in the world, except for you would be coming to beautiful Victoria twice during your study, each time for two weeks to be with your cohort more personally. And the other option is on campus. So you can be here full time, uh, right here in Canada in Victoria with your cohort. So these are two cohorts and we do bring these two cohorts together two times. And you'll have lots of ability to interact with each other and get to know uh, everyone online, whether you're on the on-campus or the blended program. And then if we move up on the page or the slide, we have the diploma, which is 10 months long. And it gives you an ability, if you already have, for example, a master's program, it gives you the ability to go a little deeper into global leadership. And we have the graduate certificate as well. If you just want to see if this program is for you, or you know the program is for you, but you just want to take the two, uh, uh, the first two core courses, which really ground you in knowledge around global leadership theory, and a little bit in terms of understanding how you can contribute to change. So we teach a lot about self in systems. Again, all three options are uh, either on campus or in blended format, which is mostly online. Wanda, we had a great question come up in the chat box um, when you were talking about our residency options. So we have Lynn asking, is there an on-site residence for the two-week residency periods? Yes, there is, in fact. So when you're here over those two weeks, we do have accommodations, if that's what you're asking for. And those accommodations are on campus. If you can secure your room ahead of time. Now we don't open up that ability to secure your room way ahead of time. So there's a specific date that we do open that up. And for students who don't get in, most likely you will get in. So there is enough space, um, generally speaking, but because many of the programs are growing on campus, there is um, you know, looking forward to that capacity limit there is the ability for you to also find places outside of campus. We have many hotels that um, we could probably recommend or suggest as well. You could do a, a quick search to see what places and also Airbnbs that might be available in, in the area. Wonderful, thanks Wanda. Um, I'll note, I live here in Victoria and when I had uh, the honor of attending one of our residencies, I did choose to uh, be on campus with my cohort um, and 
I would do that again and again. I think it was wonderful to be able to be on campus in that space with your cohort members who are joining from across Canada and across the globe. Um, something that our students have um, fondly named is something called lounge learning. So those moments where your formal class time has come to a close, but you're in the student lounges in your comfy clothes with a hot beverage, and you're just kind of downloading what you, what you explored today together. So if you have any questions about on-campus accommodation, feel free to connect with learn.more at rollroads.ca or learn.more.international at rollroads.ca if you're joining us from outside of Canada and we can always provide you with more information. We had another question about some of the information on our past slide. Um, so we have Jacqueline asking if we can provide some more information about the differences between the capstone and the internship completion options. Right. I'll jump in with that one. And yes, at the end of your second residency course, you'll have the option of taking an inter internship or a capstone. So the difference here is that with a capstone, you are focused on your research piece, what we sometimes also call an inquiry piece, which is a research or a study that looks into a complex problem. So anything that you're dealing with within the Global Leadership Program is related to something that is a complex challenge, which requi re requires um, the capacities within the program that you'll be learning and using them all in this one capstone. So it's bringing everything together that you've learned. And you'll be working with uh, either a community or within an organization. So not an internship way, but in a way of asking that organization what they need from you in how you can be of service to that organization. Or it could be more broadly with uh, different organizations or groups, we tend to advise not to go too broad, but some students choose to do a capstone where they're addressing a problem that several different communities face. And so in that, they engage with people within these different communities to ask them how they can support. And then they go into doing some research. All students who do the capstone do a component of research where they're actually engaging. It's not just desk research where they're engaging with uh, those people who are most impacted by the challenge. And then you write what we call um, a report where you summarize your conclusions, you provide some recommendations for the community you have in mind. And the, the way we work within uh, what we call MAGL, the MA in Global Leadership, is you're thinking really hard about how to contribute to change in some community that perhaps is local. And so that's why we say community and organization or even a network of people or a group. But the issue you're addressing is a global issue. So to really be clear that even though you're working specifically with one entity, perhaps, it's an issue that affects many others and many others can learn from what you're doing. And I have to say that the capstones that come out of the program are honestly really impactful. Um, so when I say a report, it's not a small deal. It's really something that is super impactful. And I hear um, all the time how communities are super grateful for the work that our students are doing. So you are contributing to change. The work we do is practical. So it's not simply theoretical. Okay, so I've said enough about the capstone. Going into the internship option, you'll be working more specifically, it's a partnership with an organization. So you are working in an organization or a company or a business. And in this place, you are learning uh, uh, through a particular role. So you are in a role which is quite different from doing a capstone. And in addition to that, you are similarly asking the organization how you can best 
help through research that you're doing to support some issue or some opportunity even. So it doesn't have to be something that's necessarily a problem, but you're addressing something that's of importance to this, this organization. And that requires a little bit of research. So there are many deliverables that you will have to engage with while you're in this internship. And the biggest one is doing a piece of research for them that helps them address an issue or an opportunity. You gain a lot of experience in the organization that you choose. So you will have to be quite careful about your choice. Uh, you'll apply, so you'll put forward your choice and a board will review whether you will be actually uh, applying all the capacities or most of the capacities you've learned within the program in this one place. So we do ensure that you are um, really using what you've learned to the benefit of this organization. And the other piece that we evaluate on this panel is that you're learning that you'll be gaining the experience you need to enter the job market in Canada. Um, there are options external to Canada, but we're mostly focused on options within Canada. I hope that answers your question, Jacqueline. We have um, tons of wonderful questions popping up in our chat box. So Wanda, would it be okay if we continue to move through the questions? Yes, let's do, let's do. Amazing. So our next question was from Ariadna. So is it possible to take the on-campus diploma and the on-campus graduate certificate? Yes, you can take the on-campus diploma for sure. Uh, we are still in discussions around the on-campus grad certificate to understand exactly how that works. And the assumption at this point is yes, that the grad certificate is also on campus. Now, with that said, uh, in the fall, because of our situation with COVID, and so that's why there's a little bit of question around the grad cert at this point, uh, we're moving everything online for both programs. So whether you're choosing to go with the on-campus stream or the or the blended stream, you are joining everyone. So both cohorts, the on-campus and the blended online, if that can make sense, just because of the turbulent times we're in. And then you'll continue in your next course uh, online. And those who are on campus will then uh, come on campus and that begins January 1st. So the grad cert covers both these courses where you're online first and then on campus. Uh, and we're, we're just making sure that that all counts towards being on campus and we're almost 100% sure. Um, so just putting out there that it's not conclusive for the cert, definitely it is for the diploma. So our next question from Emmanuel, what are some of the partner organizations uh, of MAGL? Oh, uh, <laughs> we've got many uh, partner organizations where we don't necessarily do an, um, an MOU, so a memorandum um, mem of understanding, whereas as a student, you will scan what organization you want to participate with. And we don't have to do an MOU with them for you to start participating with them. Uh, you'll just pass what that organization is uh, past your supervisor. So you will have a supervisor, whether you're doing the, um, the capstone or the internship. And we'll just review that that organization is fitting for what you want um, to do for your research. And so in that sense, that's the partner for you. Uh, at that time, and it doesn't mean that as a program, we necessarily continue with that organization afterwards. Um, so just for that period of time that you're doing your research, you will partner with some community or, uh, or organizations within a community, and that would be considered your sponsor or your partner. Amazing. And we have a question that's come up a few times. So I'll try to condense them into one. So can you talk about um, evaluation in this program? 
uh, exam formats, duration of exams, assignments? Oh, yes. Um, so it, it obviously depends on the course, but generally speaking, how each course proceeds is we don't evaluate um, your deliverables on a weekly basis, but we do expect you to be participating with your peers, so your classmates, and to some degree with your instructors on a weekly basis. So it's a very intensive form of uh, interaction. And at the end of the course, we'll take a look at all you've uh, put out on a Moodle site, which is a platform online where you put in your, your answers to prompting questions and engage with your peers. And that's um, mostly for the online or the, the blended students. The on-campus students will have opportunity to tap into some of these Moodle sites depending on the course. But overall, we're evaluating your participation through such engagement. So it's ongoing. Um, the evaluations are ongoing in terms of understanding from our end how deep you're going into the topics by the kinds of questions you pose with your peers and the kinds of answers you give. So we're looking at, for example, if you've been applying the concepts you've been learning through the uh, residencies and through the readings that you are guided to be reading on a weekly basis. You'll have assignments generally between two and three, often three assignments per course. And some of these are PowerPoint presentations where you're presenting with your peers. Some of these are papers. Some of these are individual assignments and some of them are team assignments. So they have different criteria depending on whether it's a presentation, depending on whether it's a team, uh, a team project or whether it's an individual project. The competencies we're evaluating, so to be very specific about what we're looking for generally, um, is your ability to understand how to apply and how to think through intellectually uh, through the material that you are working through. So how you apply it, how you integrate it, how you synthesize it in your reports or papers or presentations. So it's not only an understanding, but an understanding of how you apply it in a particular context. So we know how adaptable you are within different contexts in applying the information that you've learned, either again, through the plenaries, which happen in residencies or through the readings and engagement with your peers. So we're looking at self and systems. We're looking at a theoretical understanding of global leadership and leadership more broadly. We're looking to see how you apply these leadership capacities in these different contexts. We're looking at how you engage with others. So teamwork is essential. It's an essential competency within the program that we evaluate. So how you engage not only with your peers, but when you start working with um, your partner organizations, how you support them. And also we're looking at the third level. Uh, so I've described two already. The third level is looking and evaluating at how you use these concepts in broader frameworks. So applying them again, adapt, um, adaptively and seeing how you interact with structures. So how you put forward your ideas for change within, for example, political structures, economic structures, how you would apply them uh, to, to deal with challenges related to environment or climate. So those broad macro levels as well, we're looking at how you engage those um, in a practical sense. So not just theoretically. I know that's a lot, <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm really hoping to um, help you understand what you'll, you'll, you'll be learning and, and how you'll, not just how you'll be evaluated because we don't want you to focus there so much. Honestly, we wanna make sure that you're simply learning. So I hope, um, you know, with all that answering, uh, it's that I haven't taken you to focus on how you'll be evaluated. That's not where we focus in the program. And you'll get that sense once you join. We're really looking at supporting you um, and your, your journey of learning. Wanda, you covered quite a few of the questions that were asked in that last one. So amazing. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> 
I'm recognizing we have just a few more minutes together. So I'm gonna uh, bundle up some questions and share some information that's already been shared in our chat box by our wonderful enrollment advisor, Kelsey. So we had some questions around tuition. Is that different for domestic or international students? Does that differ depending on if you're looking at the 13 month or the 24 month? Well, Kelsey kindly popped a link in the chat box and shared that tuition costs for domestic students are around 28,000 and international students are around 35,000. But if you're looking for more information about payment schedules or how things may differ, feel free to click the link that Kelsey's provided in the chat box um, as that will give you more information. And of course, if you have any more questions, connect with our offices as we're always help, happy to help. We had some questions around scholarships. So I might flip very quickly uh, to a slide later in our presentation, talking all about financial aid. So we have a wonderful team of financial aid and awards specialists who can help answer any questions you might have about loans, awards, research scholarships, or other types of funding as well. So I believe Kelsey also popped a link in our chat box um, to some information about our awards page. So thanks so much, Kelsey. Here you also have a link to their website and their direct phone lines. I'll note that this session is being recorded and everyone who registered will get a copy. So no need to be taking notes as you'll have the information at your fingertips shortly. So jumping back up to some questions we had about our coming intakes. So we'll go back one slide and here they are. So while we have uh, a variety of different ways, you can join us in global leadership learning here at Royal Road. So 13 month, 24 month, blended online certificate diploma or master programs. They all will begin September 20th, 2021 putting our application deadline at June 20th, 2021. So if you're interested in starting any of our programs this year, please, please get your online application in before June 20th of this year. We do have information online for our 2022 intake as well. It will also begin September, 2022. So if you have any questions, connect with us or you're welcome to check out our website for our future dates as well. So popping back into the chat box, we had a question, some questions about the duration of the internship. Are you able to provide some more info, Wanda? Yeah, so I, in the last minute, I see we're at time. I'll try actually to hit a couple more questions. <laughs> I see that they're probably burning. Uh, so yes, the internship itself is five to six months long. With, so that's the participation with your organization but you'll do a prep, which is also about five months long while you're studying. And that prep is only about, it entails only about an hour or two of work per week. Um, so not to worry about that length or the amount that's required for the prep, although um, it is very informative, but the actual internship is five to six months. Um, how is COVID restrictions for an international, international students? You can obviously please still apply and you will um, hopefully by the fall, the restrictions will shift a little bit. So there won't be the requirement that you stay somewhere for two weeks. And that's all, I do not know um, what the restrictions will be exactly. So I would advise that you connect with the international admissions as well to know how these protocols change with time. Uh, let's see what else there was. Um, no, we don't provide details of the organization. I think I, I touched on that a little bit for the capstone or internship. There will be a process where you choose where you want to do your research and then we'll, we'll take a look. So both myself, um, your team within Global Leadership and a panel will take a look, especially for the internship, but otherwise for capstone, that's between you and your supervisor. And um, are students given grades? Yes, you do get grades in the courses, but at the end of the program, um, it'll just be cumulative of all those courses and your capstone or internship or pass fail. 
diversity of students. And this is the last question I'll be able to answer given the time. Uh, yes, we do have diversity of students coming from different countries and especially with the on campus, with the on campus program. Um, I would say, to my knowledge, all, almost all students are coming from abroad. So you'll have students from absolutely everywhere. Otherwise, for the blended program, it's, a, it's mostly a domestic uh, student base. All right, so I'll leave it at there, hand it over to Selena to close. And thank you so much, everyone, for your wonderful questions. Thank you so much, Wanda. And on the note of folks who are coming from all over the globe to join us, we had a question about if we've had inter international students uh, travel with their families. And Kelsey provided some information that yes, we have had some Megal students join the program traveling with their families. We have a team of uh, certified immigration advisors to help with any questions you might have around study permits and our student services office provides housing webinars and one on one support for accommodation. So if you have any questions about traveling to Canada to explore uh, to be a learner in this program and what that might look like for you and your family connect with their offices. I'm noticing some questions as well. We have some applicants in the room with us, which is so, so exciting. So some questions around your applications. So please, if you have personalized questions, feel free to connect with, uh, I'll pop the slide up here. Our wonderful team, uh, you can join Rhonda and her team at learn.more at rollroads.ca. And you can find Kelsey and her team at learn.more.international at rollroads.ca. So a big thank you once again for all of you for taking the time out of your morning, afternoon, or evenings, depending when and where you're watching this from. And we are so excited to see you on our campus in person or virtually one day soon. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.